All right, so by day, I'm a graphic designer, but at night I do all sorts of nonsense in the garage, like a lot of people here, I'm sure. Um, jewelry is one of my passions. This isn't exactly about that. This is metal casting of another kind, a little larger scale. Uh, aluminum parts I focus on in particular. With the technique I'm going to talk about, you can do bronze, brass, aluminum. You can uh, do all kinds of stuff, but uh, aluminum is great for uh, the beginner. It melts at 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is easy to accomplish in our homemade furnace, and you can all make one of those this weekend. Sand casting. It's like building an inside-out sand castle. That's how easy it is, so that's what we're going to look at. Um, it's cheap, it's very affordable, it's very easy to figure out, and you're going to have it all nailed in the next four minutes and 30 seconds, I guarantee it. <laughs> you need this much stuff. Uh, as you can see, that doesn't look like a lot of expensive equipment. I'm hoping you can see it's homemade, it's easily attainable. There's a furnace, a crucible, there's some sand, there's some parts, some scraps, bits and pieces you can put together yourself from the thrift store and the hardware store. Garbage can furnace. Uh, that's a garbage can inside a garbage can, or a metal pipe inside a metal pipe. And the key to making your furnace uh, insulated is that layer that you see in between those two layers of metal, and that is cement mixed with perlite. Perlite you can get at uh, Home Depot kind of stores, uh, nurseries. Uh, it's a sort of a porous pumice-like stone, and it insulates really well. So barbecue is the fuel. Smells great. Your neighbors come over looking for steaks. Boy, are they surprised. <laughs> So, what makes the difference between a furnace and a fire in a box, basically? Uh, forced air. You get a thrift store uh, hair dryer, and you plug that sucker in there. By the time those barbecues have lit up, you're melting some metal now. That sucker gets about 1,800 degrees. You can melt brass, but like I said, we're sticking with aluminum. Crucible. You need to put, something, you need to put your metal in something, and that's your crucible. Uh, on the right here is a cutoff propane bottle. I recommend using an empty one for that. Uh, <laughs> like I said, cheap garbage can kind of parts. So you start your metal. You get it in there, you get the furnace firing up, and what are you going to do for the next 20 minutes while the metal's melting? You need to make a mold. You've got to have something you want to make. Uh, that comes from sand, uh, and you're going to see what I'm talking about in a second. But here's the formula. Silica sand and bentonite clay. Those are both cheap and attainable. Silica sand you can get at your local hardware store. Uh, bentonite clay. I got mine on eBay, five bucks for five pounds. That hand there is squeezing the clay. You gotta mix it at right ratio and dampen it with water and you give it the squeeze test and you want it to stick together, hold its form. So a cope and drag. These are two frames in which you uh, build your mold and this is gonna be something you can make yourself real easily. Um, and then here's your part. And I brought one, which I actually made myself. This is made out of aluminum, real metal. And uh, anybody who wants to see that's welcome to. You can make your original pattern out of wood, clay. You can have a broken metal piece that you want to reproduce. Uh, basically, your pattern is whatever you want to create and any kind of prototype you can make it out of. So let's do it, right? Put the cope down. That's the, uh, well, the cope or the drag. That's one of those two wooden frames. It's your choice. Put it down, and you put parting dust on there. That's uh, talcum powder, baby gold bond. Smells great. <laughs> Keeps the sand from sticking. So anybody ever tell you to go pack sand? Let's do it right now. So you take the sand mixture with the clay and the dampness from the water and you put your part in there with the dust and you ram it down real good. That dowel that you're looking at is uh, going to be pulled out and that leaves you a channel into which you pour the molten metal. The little circle to the right, that's the bottom of that dowel. So when you pull that out, there's a hole there. Pull out your part that you made and it leaves a perfect impression. Here's the inside out sand castle uh, underneath that sand. It really sticks together. It's amazing. So you cut a little channel, you use your finger, you use a bent piece of metal uh, between the hole where the dowel was and the impression where your part was, and that's called the sprue. A sprue is really important. You might think you can just pour into an open-faced mold, but the thing is the metal shrinks, and uh, it needs to be able to pull more metal in. So as it's cooling, that sprue is uh, instrumental. This is where it starts to get fun. Close the mold. You want to blow out any loose dust that's in there. You want to... Uh, Make sure it clasps. The cope and drag uh, on that model had a, a little hook that holds them together. Um, that's important because when you pour the metal in there, it's actually very dense and the top of the mold can float up. So not only does that keep them aligned, but it keeps the whole thing together. I've had molten metal around my feet more than enough times. Uh, you open up the mold about five minutes later, and what do you know? It works. That's pretty exciting. It's hot. It smells like steaming baby gold bonds. And... Uh, <laughs> It's really a pleasure. A hacksaw and a grinder, you're going to cut off that metal sprue, and you're going to do a little finishing work, and uh, there you go. You can make pretty much anything you need. I know KiteBot's interested. Who else, right? 
More information on my website. Thank you very much, David. You know, I don't know how many of you know this, but Bree Pettis, the fellow who 